thank you very much. And, uh, you know, it's great to be back in Madison. It, it did occur to me this morning as we were standing out there in the cold, this is the third time I have been to an event organized by the Tea Party in Madison. <laughs> the first time was down on the river and we froze. <laughs> the second time we were down on the river and there were white caps on the Ohio River and we froze. <laughs> and this morning, well, I'm beginning to think it's me. <laughs> but honestly, uh, if the weather's a little bit cold, I always feel the warmth from an audience like this. And I really am humbled by the support we have in this part of the state. It is just absolutely amazing. And I often tell people, uh, as I've been traveling around, it's an amazing thing for a guy from Darmstadt, Indiana. Which, if you don't know, is just South Hobstadt. I can see the looks on your face. <laughs> It's amazing for a guy from Darmstadt, Indiana, to go all over the state and see that so many people have worked so hard and given so much to get us in a position to win a primary on May 8th. And I want to just say thank you. All. And it occurred to me a moment ago when Judd was speaking and again when Jim was speaking, you know, for those of us who are candidates, it's always hard. Don't get me wrong, it's always hard. But there's somebody that it's harder on than us. Because we get our moments in front of the cameras, in front of the microphones. But would you all especially give a round of applause for Lynn and for Natasha? Because what they go through as the spouses of candidates is much worse than what the candidates themselves go through. Would you two say that? And you guys are in my thoughts because I was speaking to my wife just last night and I didn't make it home again last night as I rarely do anymore. And every time she goes to the grocery store, when she goes to choir practice, whatever, people start asking her about all the negative things that are being out there and being said about me. And every time those go to the spouse, it's like having a band-aid ripped off a of fresh food. So again, to you guys, thank you for what you're doing. You know, I have to say, I always enjoy the Tea Party events, but I start my comments today by noting that. Uh, you know, there's a lot of unfair things being floated around through the mails, and you see Photoshop being used a lot, right? Oh, yeah. Photoshop's distorting things. And I have to say, it is kind of sad, I think, to come here, and I, I know your congressional candidates are going to have a debate with Mr. Obama, but, you know, it's sad that they had to Photoshop this. Where are the teleprompters? They <laughs> He's not looking at the audience, he's reading it from the teleprompter that they photoshopped out of the picture. <laughs> well, we have just 10 days, just 10 days until this important primary. Uh, when we began our campaign on February 22nd, 2011, I knew it was going to be a long, long slog until May 8th, 2012. When we gathered at the Arts Garden, which is literally above the intersection of Washington and Illinois streets in downtown Indianapolis, there were about 200 people who gathered that day. And I did something that I know shocked all of them, but I did it to make a promise to them and basically to put a vow upon myself, which was to begin that announcement of candidacy that day by saying we were going to do something at that moment that we would do again on the night of May 8th, 2012, when this campaign ends, regardless how this campaign ends. And that is, we began with a round of applause in tribute to a person who's given great public service for more than 50 years of his life, and that is Senator Dick Luger. He deserves the respect of every single one of us, even though we may have times where we disagree with him. If you've ever met Mr. Luger, he is a wonderful man. He is a gentleman. He truly is. He's a very nice guy. I had people, after our debate the other night, when the audio went off, they saw us still on camera talking and kind of joking. It is impossible not to like Dick Luger. But I do believe it is time. You know, we've heard the word used here by both Judd and Jim, and it is that word conservative that is so important. I am absolutely convinced that we must be reinstituting more conservative values in the United States Congress and the United States government than what we've seen in the last few years. And that's why I entered this race, because I know I am more conservative than Mr. Luger. And I will tell you, I am more frustrated with Republicans than I am with Democrats. Yeah. Because I don't expect anything from the Democrats. You know, I, I, I know who they are. I'm not going to agree with them. It's okay. 
But why I am frustrated with Republicans, and even there are a lot of Republicans in the United States Senate and the House of Representatives today who will vote the right way. But even when they vote the right way, they aren't coming back to their district or going back to their state, getting in front of the unfriendly crowd, going to the unfriendly TV host, and making the argument why their vote was the right vote in reducing the size of government, in rolling back spending. They're not making the argument. We're never going to win national opinion if we don't change the argument so people understand. You know, I've had people, especially here in the last couple of weeks as we've been searching in the polls, national news people come to me and say, well, how do you change the argument? How do you get the country to see things differently? And I say, it's not impossible. In fact, I'll give you an example. It was during the eight years of the Reagan administration. Not one single day during those eight years did Republicans control the United States House of Representatives. Not one single day during those eight years was the national news media sympathetic to Ronald Reagan. And yet, you look at what Ronald Reagan got done, it was amazing. How did he do it? He went around the news media. He went around the Congress and he spoke to the American people directly in a way that saved his vision. Often he did it with humor. He lifted people up to the possibility of what conservatism could bring to the United States government. And so we saw mammoth tax cuts. We saw some rollbacks in government, even as we saw the United States military restored, and we saw our place in the world being increased, not being decreased as it was during Jimmy Carter's years. <coughs> Ronald Reagan spoke the truth, and you know, if you're old enough to remember from those days, he spoke from the heart. As conservatives, we have to be selling our message from the heart to win people to our point of view. You know, I will tell you, at 60 years old, it is a beautiful thing to run for an office that, frankly, I don't have to have. You know, I don't need this job for the money. I certainly don't need this job to have a title in front of my name. I really don't get into those things. I love having a Sunday afternoon to get on the motorcycle in southern Indiana and ride north to Madison. <laughs> <laughs> Judge said so perfectly, sometimes we must. We must set ourselves aside to do something for a cause greater than ourselves. And we see this as that occasion. You know, if you've ever heard me speak anywhere, you've probably heard me speak a little bit of American history. And for many years, as more than 35 years now, every night I try to read 10 pages of American history. The more I do it, the more I love this country. And I used to wonder, as I would read those pages of history in the evening, what must it have been like to be alive right then? What must it have been like, like to have those historical moments and to be a part of it? And over the last year or so, I've come to realize what it was like. It's like right now. Most people during those historical moments were living their lives, being busy, doing what they do that they didn't notice history was being made around them. Case in point, in the last 12 months, if you didn't notice, if you loaned your money to the government of the United States by buying a 10-year treasury bill, the United States government would have paid you 1.7% for your money, the lowest rate ever in American history. And it's because the Federal Reserve is artificially crushing interest rates. That's a very dangerous thing, and I won't go off into the weeds with that. But understand, it's a historic moment. If you haven't noticed in the last 12 months, for the first time in American history, in peacetime, our national debt has grown to equal or the sum total of all the products and services delivered in the United States in one year, our gross domestic product. Our national debt is as big as our GDP. If you haven't noticed, about five months ago, for the first time since records have been kept in 1850, but this is probably true back prior to the American Revolution, for the first time ever, the net investment capital is now flowing out of the United States faster than it's flowing in. Until five months ago, there was always more investment capital coming in from the outside than going out, and now that's reversed. 
And I'll tell you, as someone who spent 31 years in the business world and someone who lives in the world of finance, that is a very troubling sign. And then, of course, last August, for the first time in American history, the credit rating of the United States was downgraded from AAA. We live in, his, in an historic moment. And as has been said already at this microphone, 2012 is a critically, I think, the most important election in this country since 1860. Yes, right. it is. And we are almost as polarized now as we were in 1860. Totally different issue, obviously. And no, I'm not predicting civil war. But the truth is, we are now at that point where half of Americans see government as being something that should be limited and reduced and less expensive, and the other half of America thinks government is there to provide what they want, when they want, when they need it, from whomever it comes. This is a polarizing time. And where will it go? I don't know, because that part of the history hasn't been written yet. But it's why all of us need to be engaged. It is why all of us need to be involved in talking to our friends, our neighbors, our family members, those we go to church with, about the critical nature of 2012. You know, I would not be in this business if I did not describe myself as an optimist. I do see the glass is half full. As Ronald Reagan said in his first inaugural address, we have every right to dream great dreams because we are Americans. We have done things the rest of the world can only envy and still yet imagine. But we cannot do it if we accept the leadership of a person who wants to bring America down in the world because he does not understand the heritage of this country. I'm running for the United States Senate, not because I have personal animosity to Mr. Luger, but because I want to be part of a vision that restores a more conservative Senate that can lead us to greater things, not just maintain the status quo. I want to be part of a Senate that, yes, will roll back the federal government so that our individual freedom might increase. And I want to be part of the United States Senate that is going to make history by getting America started on that path where we can again be that last best hope of Earth and that shining city on a hill. Campaigns are about people. You know, we have, in this final 10 days, what we call our Gimme Six program. All of you have seen the kids do this, right? Gimme five, what's that mean? That's Gimme Five. I'm asking Gimme Six. <laughs> Gimme Six hours on Election Day. Sit at a poll for six hours so the last voice people hear when they go into that booth is, please vote for Richard Murdoch, it's time. Or if you can be at home and you can pick up your phone for six hours and call people and say, you know, today is primary day, please go vote for Richard Murdoch because it's time. I would be honored by that help because it is time, not just for Richard Murdoch. It is time we get this country back on a more conservative course, and with your help, we will get that done. God bless you all. We're off to Corridon. We're going to catch up with the Tea Party Express one more time, and tomorrow in Fort Wayne. And we're on the run for 10 more days. God bless you all.